This is a, just a really kind of a rough bit of um, kind of a really rough update video of my Maxim PowerPoint charge controller. Um, first things first, I've gotten lots of messages and comments on my videos from people who want help designing one of these things and they're always asking me for advice because I've done a great many of the videos that relate to actually designing and building your own Maxim PowerPoint charge controller, not just implementing an already extant one in your own DIY solar system. Don't. At least not right now because a lot of this des my design process for my own Maxim PowerPoint charge controller has been throwing crap at the wall and seeing what sticks and as a result things like I still need to optimize the magnetics so that's the main thing that I want to do next summer because right now I'm busy junior year electrical engineering fun stuff and I'll be away at school for for pretty much almost all of the of the uh, next nine months or so really up until May aside from about a month long break over Christmas or a couple of weeks so don't expect any new videos on this until really a May of 2014-ish, somewhere around there. Um, so yeah, there's a there's that's just a couple of things that I want to really do once I get this project working. Or it, well, well, the things that I want to do as in the course of getting this project working is. First off, getting the proper magnetic stuff, and the thing is, is that the magnetic design stuff, that's going to be next semester. Um, so get the magnetics working, and once I do that, not only will I have my working single channel thing, which is really good about it, is that it's got a bomb cost, not factoring the piece, the hand-carved PCB, so I need to see about getting boards made, because I don't really have any the ability to make them on my own, although I may experiment with that. Um, is that my bomb cost is, which is B-O-M, Bill of Materials, for those of you who just happen to stumble upon this video and are not in any way familiar with electronics design, it's only about 30 to 40 bucks. And that's factoring in the expensive bits like the inductor and everything, and, you know, the book a piece or so fets, um, and whatnot, and the micro that's a few bucks, and, uh, you know, my less than a buck for the 5-volt power supply. And all the other miscellaneous crap. That's the main thing. Once I get that working, one thing that I want to work on, which will be one of the things that will be especially useful, and one of the reasons why I wanted to do this, is that I can make a multiple channel ma maximum power point charge controller, which can handle or independently track the maximum power points of a number of different PV arrays. And that's one reason why... I was experimenting with a number of different micros. Uh, some of these, like, I don't think the big ones, except 777, I don't think I've tested that. But the thing is, is that they've got uh, things like three independent PWM channels. The PIC-1609939 has five, two of them being half bridge and one of them being full bridge. Uh, if you configure that, although I'd only be using them single pin outputs for each one. And not just because I need the other pins, it's just that I don't need, a, I don't need an H bridge or a half bridge for what I'm doing because the FET driver for the buck converter does the half bridge stuff, so even though it's a, a half bridge FET, ar FET arrangement, the thing just needs the one PWM channel, which is advantageous because they don't have timing issues with micro and all that other crap. But yeah, that's one thing about, and this is one reason why I kind of put the project on hold, is because due to the limitations of my compiler, which doesn't have any support, um, it's, um, it's an out-of-support um, compiler, even though it isn't basic, which is one reason why I'm using it, because that's where all my embedded systems experience has been. It's been in uh, basic programming. The language, um, of course. Because um, I've done things like C++ and Java, but that's in the context of programming, computer programs. Um, although once I learn some C and Assembler, then I can just use MPLAB, which is a microchip program um, a compiler. It isn't uh, doesn't rely on any third-party crap. But, um, that's one thing that I want to do once I get the, um, either get my compiler to not being so schizoid, or get a, a better compiler, is have a, um, a multi-channel thing, and that, that really knock-in would won't be too easy, because it just means that I need to 
duplicate my code architecture so that I just have the algorithm execute for one of a number of different PV versions just instead of just having it in the one that I do for my extant version of the project. Um, and then other things that I may experiment with is things like the um, 1A to 4431 that and a couple of other different micros as well have have motor control PWM so I might use that although that um, allows for things like phasing of different outputs and stuff but the thing is that relies on its own set of control registers so that you really need a, an optimized I think assembly subroutine and I don't know assembly and from what I've heard it's fairly hard because it's basically machine code with mnemonics and my specialty is hardware electronics I mean, all this stuff, it would be, in theory, implementable in hardware, but it would be an absolute nightmare to design it. I know, because I've tried designing it in my head, and... Oh. But, yeah, so I'm already getting a bit rambling. Um, anyways. The, um... Other things that I, One other thing that I may experiment with is things like a 18F4550 and the 18F2550, which is the chip that I actually have. The really only difference is that the 4550 just has... It's, it's a 40-pin dip instead of a 28-pin, and it's just got, um... I think uh, it's just it's just really more IOs. They're basically the same chip, just number of IOs is the difference, and the buck or so difference in price between them. Just being more expensive because it's fancier. But um, anyways, so really that's one of the other things that I want to do with the project is besides getting the magnetics working, which is critical, um, is just have a um, a, a control micro that doesn't puke. When I try and use more than one hardware pulse with modulation output at a time, because I've tried it a couple of times, but I haven't done any vid videos on it because it's just really nasty. And regardless of what I tell it to do, each pin just outputs a roughly 30 or so, like, like a 2,000 into 4,000 cycle per second square wave, roughly 50% duty cycle, regardless of what I tell the duty cycle to be, regardless of what I tell the fre output frequency to be, regardless of the frequency that I operate the chip at. So. That was a bit of a nightmare and a lot of waste of time. And one last thing that I want to do is because one issue with the buck converter is that due to the very high potential difference across the inductor with very high input potential arrays, well, relatively speaking, it technically isn't high potential because that's getting the tens of kilovolts, um, is that one issue when you have, say, a, a couple hundred volt PV array, like say you're converting a grid tie system to a, a battery backup system and you don't want to have to complete run all new home run cables and uh, completely rewire the array is that because of the very high potential difference across the inductor in the buck converter you have very high losses and um, unless you have a very big um, big core or at least an inductor designed to minimize the flux loading in the core because flux loading and losses are roughly proportional, proportional, at least according to the readings that I've done. Because again, really, this is throwing crap at the wall and seeing what sticks. So, at all, one of the things that I want to work on, and I've actually ordered a transformer to do this. It's um, surplus from, or was designed for some switching power supply, and only ten bucks, which is reasonable for these things. That's from uh, surplus sales in Nebraska. I just have a transformer instead of in place of the buck converter so I've still got things like a um, so I've still got the output switching fit well this is really just um, uh, implementing some synchronous rectification just because of the very high currents involved here each of these nodes will be carrying you know uh, you know in the tens of amperes like you know easily 30 or 40 amperes um, even a shot key rectifier will still be dissipating in the order of you know between 12 and 20 watts which, especially given that this will be going to a, a few hundred volt or a few hundred watt array, that's fairly significant losses, and also means big heat sink, big diodes, expensive. And um, again, a high side switcher. Uh, one thing that I don't know if I'm going to do is if I'm going to have just a single end drive like this. Actually, looking just like I could easily just put the fit there, but who knows. I just use a low side switcher, but then who knows? Again, I haven't built any of this yet. And, um, and just have a, um, or, or whether or not I'm going to need something like a push pull arrangement. Of course, then again, that depends on the, the, the transformer that I got is designed for single ended stuff like this, so, but 
Again, that's all crap that remains to be seen. Um, so yeah, this is just a bit of a um, an update video with regards to the Maxim Power Point Charge Controller project. Why I haven't done videos in so long, and why I'm not going to be doing them until next May. Not going to. So yeah.